Namaste. A very very happy new year to all of you. And uh, today I'm having a live or a very very special session, a topic which is close to so many of our hearts, but often doesn't really get spoken about. A lot of the emails that I receive are actually the main inspiration behind this live. I'm often overloaded with uh, emails with young people, you know, people in their 30s to 50s asking me what is it that they can do to really look after their parents. Almost all of us have this feeling that, uh, well, our parents have looked after us really well. They have provided us with all the education and opportunities and uh, good food to eat while we were growing up. Now, what is it that we can do as they age to ensure that they age well, that they live well and that they really make the most of, the, of their life because all of them have worked really hard to have the life that they have uh, to, and they should be able to enjoy it, be it travel, be it the house that they have, be it the car, be it all of those things. So I'm going to tell you a few things that I have learned over the last 20 years of my work and I'm going to tell you how to look after your parents better and hopefully in 2021, not just you, but even your parents will get healthier and fitter and prettier and sexier and all of those things because they used to be all of those things. Let's not forget that, you know, let's not make our parents to be some kind of old aging people waiting for their turn to come. They're absolutely people with aspirations and ambitions and if nothing else, I guess as children, we should be able to allow them those aspirations and ambitions. So here's me telling you what are the things that you should be looking out for as far as your uh, parents go. Are you ready for this? Good. Now, number one thing that we should all remember is that we are all living longer than what we used to just about 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, when India gained independence, someone of my age, I will soon turn 43, you know, this was our life expectancy at 42. If you died, it was kind of okay. It was average. Today, we are not dying at 42. We are not even dying at 62. We are, uh, we are maybe dying at 92. And uh, if we are going to live well into our 90s, then it is important that we live well with all our senses functioning because today we do have uh the drugs the doctors the money and the means to make that happen to make a good life happen all that it needs is a little bit of observation so what is it that you should be observing when you meet your parents and every time that you meet your parents this is especially true for uh, all of the nris who really worry uh you know because their parents are back home in india and they're abroad and um, a lot of times they're like my karu so that they feel better so number one thing, okay, so I'm going to start from head to toe and then I'm going to tell you what are the things that you can do, okay. So number one, you will find sometimes that their hair uh, invariably is either graying or falling. So now if it's the usual graying, if it's the usual falling, you don't really need to do anything about that. That's, that's part of aging. Okay, so don't get too hassled about that. Now, unfortunately, our parents also get more hassled about uh, how much gray they're looking, but that's not going to have a real bearing on how their organs are functioning. So you don't really need to go about coloring that and looking younger. When your organs internally work at their optimum is when you look and feel younger. So uh, that's the first thing that you need to remember. So ye to head ki baat ho gay. Um, and then I'm also going to tell you what are the things that you can do for it. Everyone feels at all ages that their hair can actually be a little better than what it is. And you know what your parents have not had in a very, very long time? A nice chumpy or a nice hair massage. Uh, most of us, you know, especially girls will remember their mothers giving them a nice head massage. Even boys will remember that. But how many of us have actually turned around and given them a head massage? Most of us haven't. Uh, most of us haven't even thought about that. But you know what? Even if you are not around your uh, parents, even if you can get someone to uh, come and give them like a head, uh, like a massage professional to come and give them a head massage even once every month, 
i think that is going to do extremely good not just for their head but also for their sleep quality as we begin to age our sleep quality begins to drop and um, good sleep is extremely important for good aging so one of the things that i think you should be investing in is getting someone to do a head massage uh maybe in one of the later sessions i'll also show you how to do a head massage to yourself so if you would like to do a head massage for yourself uh, you can do that but uh, my recommendation is get a head massage that's always a good idea the second thing that you should be looking at is eyes a lot of uh, aging parents obviously have uh, power in their eyes or fir uske baad mein uh they instead of wearing their specs they want to remove their specs now if you watch your parents and if you notice that every time that they are crossing the road they remove their specs or every time that they're climbing the stairs they remove their steps uh remove their specs or every time they're walking down the slope they're removing their specs or if you find that your mother is going in the kitchen and every time that she is going to the kitchen and uh, cooking then she removes her specs then it means that they are in the need of an eye exam what you need for them is to book an appointment with an ophthalmologist and get them a proper eye exam and ensure that they are getting the right power or the right number because for all of you who have seen uh my session of you know doctors for good health you all now know that most that the brain receives a lot of information from the eyes almost as high as 80% you want them to be functioning well in their brains till the very end for that you need to ensure that their eyes are doing well so uh make sure that you get them an eye exam and here's the other thing okay a lot of what i'm going to tell you in this session is about how you should be spending money on prevention of big diseases so that you don't land up spending a lot of money in trying to cure those diseases because um you know by the time you hit a big disease a cure almost is um, is evasive no matter how much time and how much money you spend on it prevention on the other hand is extremely easy it may seem a little costly in that moment a few thousand rupees but it is money well spent because it also helps you save time okay so number one you get them an eye exam or you know if you are if they are reading the paper or they are reading something and then they are like abhi mera sar dukh raha hai ye pad ke so they stop reading or if they stop solving uh, crossword puzzles or if they simply stop going to the library and reading as often then again they need an eye exam so what do they need number one an eye exam number two invest in good glasses most times glasses are expensive but uh, when glasses um, a lot of the expensive glasses are actually worth the money because once you wear those glasses then you will notice that reading becomes easier that they are no longer needing to remove their specs while they're climbing down the stairs or the slope that they are actually able to go to the kitchen with their specs on and cook and not have any kind of a hassle so make sure because again if there is too much eye strain then they will have headaches they will have migraines they will have sleeplessness most you know it could even lead to things like loss of memory and uh, they may get little like chirchida or annoying or irritating and we don't really want that to happen so make sure that uh, you're doing that for them the third thing that you should be looking out for is shoulders so watch your parents and see if their posture has changed you know so typically now if you look at them and if they're wearing a shirt or a blouse or whatever if one of the shoulder begins to like crease like this then you do know that uh, they are kind of slouching and once they begin to slouch then over a period of time it's also going to mean um you know overloading of all of the organs including the heart and the kidneys and the respiratory system and stuff like that their chest should always be open 
uh so make sure that your parents maintain a good posture now it's not going to be as easy for you to ask them to maintain a good posture when you're growing up as a child a lot of the parents have just hit you on your back and said it's listen sit up straight and then most of us have sat up straight you can't go around hitting your parents in the back you know it may cause a, a whole lot of damage so what is it that you can do you can invest in a proper gym um you must have noticed this that a lot of people with diabetes also have a frozen shoulder you must have also noticed that a lot of people with um, with with constipation and stuff like that invariably have shoulder issues or neck issues an easy way to resolve that is to get a gym membership get them a gym membership even if they go to the gym just once every week they will land up developing better musculature especially on their backs and it will allow them a better posture a more open chest easier breathing and lesser load on all of their organs so it may seem expensive because going to the gym getting a trainer all of that can cost you anywhere in the range of depending on where you are and who you sign up with anywhere in the range of 8000 rupees to a lakh of rupees per year but it is it is money well spent okay so um get going with that you can also join us this evening for the ayangar yoga class and even in ayangar yoga for all those of you who are familiar with ayangar yoga you know they use a belt and then they loop that belt in a way which actually works at pulling your shoulders back so uh, that is something worth doing because it not just releases your spine and your neck it all actually prevents this whole overload that you are feeling on your uh, on your heart and lungs and stuff you will also notice poor shoulders and uh, or weak shoulders shoulder aches uh, we poor posture in people with blood pressure so if your parents have blood pressure if they have diabetes or if they simply have like a slouching back then you get them to the gym and it saves you money okay so uh, that's the second thing uh, sorry that's the third thing that you should be looking out for Now the fourth thing that you should be looking out for is extremely important and this is going to require a little bit of physical exam from your end about them. Um watch your parents standing straight up. Of course most of them would have gained a little bit of weight as compared to what you remember of them. So get them to stand straight, okay? So if this is straight, then get them to turn around like this so that you're watching them from the side. Now when you're watching them from the side if you notice that the stomach is bulging out and the arms are thinning then it means that you know they are um, they may face issues of or it basically means that their kidney liver spleen all of that is not really functioning at its optimum they're actually going through what is called as wasting wasting is um when there is wastage of your uh, of your musculoskeletal system so you actually begin to thin out or dry out from your body but the stomach be- begins to look like one tumble you know it it looks like there is a ball in there so the obesity also comes in two different ways one is where they get fat but then all of their body gets fat so the arms have also gotten fat and uh, the stomach has also gotten fat and the hips have also gotten fat and the back has also gotten fat legs have gotten fat that is not such a big problem okay of course it needs to be prevented and you need to reverse that too but if you do notice and i'm going to stand up and show you that the you know you have to watch them like this and if you don't notice that the rest of them is becoming very thin but the stomach is getting fat like this so if the stomach is big and the rest of them is thin then you need to step in okay and how do you step in in various ways of course once a week gym is extremely important but now you should you also need to get them once a week of 
yoga because what yoga does is that it actually uses your body or your musculoskeletal system to work on your internal health you must understand that it is extremely difficult to access your organs like heart liver kidney spleen large intestines and all of that without any kind of invasive procedure the only thing which allows you access to your organs without any kind of invasive procedure is yoga and therefore you must get them to uh, to sign up for a classical yoga class if your parents are uh, difficult people then you should get them into a um, into a personal training or somewhere you know where the class size is small or the class size is more focused all right but you must get them to sign up for a yoga class there are many online classes you all do know that i'm a huge believer in ayangar yoga so look out for ayangar yoga they have a website it's called ayangaryoga.in you will find the listing of all of the teachers that they have you will also find that a lot of them run uh, run these small workshops or courses so if you feel that your parents will be unable to do those workshops or courses you can sign up for those workshops or courses learn a few asanas and then teach it to your parents because uh, when you're teaching it to your parents it may cost you time is it may even cost you a headache but it is more than worth the trouble okay so uh, so i'm going to take question answers at the end someone's asking me how do you convince them uh you know i'll tell you how you convince them uh, later but for now know this that you get them to sign up if they don't sign up you learn and you teach and i'll teach you the soft skills of uh, you know convincing them later all right so that's about the stomach um and the large stomach should tell you that there are bigger problems it's not just um, it's it's not graceful aging and you want to intervene I'm also going to tell you all of the dietary tips for this in a short while once I'm done with running you from the head to toe. Then we come to the hips. Hips, if you want your parents to age well, what you want for them are open hips. Open hips mean that they should be able to sit cross-legged. ideally they should be able to do uh, what is called as the brazilian test where they are able to sit down on the floor and get up on their own um, how do you know that your parents are getting stiff on the hips well if they start complaining during diwali puja uh, that they cannot sit down if you notice that you are now needing to give them a chair for uh, for prayers you know or for the puja if they need like a high rise stool to sit so that they can go through those uh, go through that half an hour or one hour of the puja that they're doing i also know a few people who are uh, doing namaz but are sitting on the chair so if those kind of things begin to happen then again it means that you need to intervene now a stiff hip you don't want that because again it, it's going to mean many things uh, lower back problems leg um leg may pain the minute they have leg pain they are going to have a sleepless night or uh, it is also going to mean weak digestion so if they have constipation if they have bloating if you find them eating one of those things like kayam churna ya isab gol ya drinking endless cups of tea just to be able to go to the loo watch for their hips their hips have invariably gotten tight now what can you do here what you need here is strong legs you need to get them to develop strength in their legs now how do you go about developing strength in their legs of course you have to get them to continue with the yoga and with the weight training but now you need to add one more thing here which is actual using of the legs so um for every 30 minutes of them sitting get them to stand get them to move a lot of us make that mistake ke uh, you know buzurg hai to baithe hue hai to sab 
कुछ उनके पास आप लेके जाओ पानी का ग्लास लेके जाओ चाय का कप लेके जाओ चाय का चाय पी के हो गया तो आप ही खाली कप उठा रहे हो एंड स्टफ लाइक दैट ऑल दिस इज ओके इफ दे गेट एक्सट्रीमली सिक एंड देयर ऑन बेड रेस्ट और इफ दे हैव अ फ्लू एंड दे नीड मोर हेल्प बट ऑन अ डे टू डे बेसिस दे शुड बी डूइंग दीज थिंग्स फॉर देम एंड यू शुड एनकरेज देम टू मूव शॉर्ट ब्रेक्स इन सिटिंग can do a lot of good for your parents okay so a get them to do that now with the breaks in sitting with getting them to be more active you should also encourage them to take stairs so let them do at least a floor or two every single day it need not be a lot you don't need to climb a building of 20 floors but if you climb even one floor if you climb even two floors that's a lot so get them to climb stairs another extremely safe activity for all of the old and aging who have stiff hips because stiff hips are not going to come on their own they're going to come also with a weak knee or knee trouble knee pain and it's also going to come with back trouble and back ache a safe cardiovascular activity for them is cycling so um, you know once they begin to cycle uh you we should aspire that they are able to cycle even out on the road because it will also tell them how to like cope up with traffic where to turn and stuff so it also keeps them more mentally alert but for that we are also going to need better roads we are also as citizens going to need uh our politicians to ensure that our parents are aging well health you must remember is a collective responsibility i alone cannot do anything to ensure that my parents are doing well or that my children are doing well but we together as a society as a community as a city as a state as a nation are actually stakeholders in each other's health so the next time that you're voting ask your local mla for safe cycling lanes for safe walking paths you know we at least in mumbai you must have all seen this a new building comes up a footpath which was otherwise like this becomes like this uh your parents with stiff hip will actually stop walking because then they are no longer able to uh walk on that whole thing so uh yeah get a politician to help and get them cycling cycling is extremely safe and useful for aging parents so is swimming but i don't know how many can swim but cycling is easy you can get a cycle in as little as 2000 or 3000 rupees and then you can start uh, cycling initially at a smaller in a smaller area then in a larger area uh, for all those of you who live in large compounds um, you know cycling is really good because it's safe and everyone should be cycling all right so that's about the stiff hip what about the knees how do you know that knees are going bad you know you just need to watch your parents uh there is something called as gait g a i t g a i t is uh, is the way we walk okay uh, for all those of you who have seen kabhi khushi kabhi gham you have like jaya bachchan knowing that sharukh khan has already landed in that from that a uh, private chopper and that he's coming she knows it because actually biomechanically if you look at it if she's able to sense his gait then she knows that ye wale gait mein mera wala beta hi aata hai so similarly we all know from the way they walk you know that this is my father or this is my mother uh, a lot of the people are known for their gait like sanjay dat is known for the way he walks you can imitate the way he is walking amita bachchan is imitated often for the way he is uh, walking kalidas has written about the way a woman who is completely uh, you know at the prime of her youth walks so gait is extremely important now when the gait changes and this is extremely important this is what neuroscientists are now noticing that when the gait changes when the way people are walking changes it is actually a reflection that the brain has changed or more specifically the brain has aged and you don't want an aging brain um you don't want your parents to repeat what they have told you over and over again you don't want to say anything five times before your parents actually get it you don't want your parents to look at you and think 
that they're looking at their sister and not at uh, their daughter now if you want to not go through all of these things you must make sure that you are noticing a gait change even before it leads to the complete deterioration of the brain so what's a gait change gait change is very easy you know a lot of us have seen it and i'm going to show it to you again so normally if your let's say if your parents walk like this all of a sudden if you start noticing the shift in the weight and the weight actually begins to go side to side while walking versus just going vertically ahead then it means that it is an indication that there could be changes to the uh, brain or like i said aging of the brain how do you get in again yoga cycling weight training and now all of the things that i'm going to tell you about food but here's one more thing that i want to tell you um for everyone with this whole gait change what we use in our practice and what really works beautifully is til oil what you need to do is get til oil which is um, you know kachche ghani ka til oil jo ke abhi aapko ye season mein milega and heat it a little bit okay you take the til oil and you heat it a little bit then you crush garlic and add this crushed garlic to this heated oil and allow that oil to cool down so you heat the til oil bring it down and crush garlic and add that crushed garlic to the til oil let it cool down once it cools down just get your parents to massage their legs with this crushed garlic wala til oil every day in the night it helps with pain relief it helps with keeping their joints in a good shape it at least prevents further deterioration and it leads to good sleep you must remember that poor hips poor uh, knees invariably also come in the way of uh, sleep and you don't want that to happen any which ways gait changes changes to the brain poor sleep is a further indication that it's going to be uh, changes to the brain so massage that and they are uh, good to go lastly before i get to what all you should be doing with their food look at their toes so um, you know ideally we should all be walking as much as possible without any footwear at least when we are at home so that our legs actually our feet actually get to bear our weight and that they stay healthy and strong you all know that there is a lot on our feet which is connected to many organs and nerves in our body so um bare feet walking at home as much as possible but wherever in india it gets extremely cold which is why it is difficult to walk bare feet have a separate set of slippers that you can wear at home you don't want the same set of slippers outside and inside not just for things like uh, dust and hygiene and gandagi and stuff like that but also for the way the slippers or and our footwear wears out so invariably kya hota hai that as we begin to age our uh, you know we begin to pronate pronate matlab our inner thighs become very weak and because our inner thighs become very weak we actually begin to collapse like this on the foot and therefore every time that you look at the footwear you will notice that from the inner ankle it is actually worn out much more as compared to what it is on the outer ankle so the same worn out footwear if they wear in the house also it will create more problems so wo footwear ko alag alag rakho ek bahar ke liye aur ek ghar ke liye aur ghar ka bhi routinely check karo agar 6 mahine ke baad aisa lagta hai chappal rakh ke that inside is more worn out and outside is less worn out then it is time to buy a new chappal for the indoors same thing with the outdoors also okay you have to look at their toes i'm sorry i am going to show you my toes my toes are not looking very good right now now the toes should always be open in the aging you will find that they become a little like this so when you are sitting if you find that your parents are sitting with their toes going down then again that's a problematic sign 
okay and you want them to open the toes now what can you do or what can you say to them so that they open their toes often a very very simple thing is to use the fingers so if they are sitting like this all the time every time that they're having a bath you know because as they age sometimes they also then begin to have these like fungal infections in their feet which can then be a problems then uh, you know at times it gets so bad that they need like an antibiotic and then after an antibiotic an antacid and stuff like that just because of some infection in the foot so get them to use their fingers and every time they're having a bath to simply do this so in between your toes and put your fingers and then move them like this now this helps not just in getting rid of any not just in keeping in between of your toes clean but also in keeping your brain and everything in a good shape it makes sure that you are able to place your weight on your feet really well and that you're able to go on with your life beautifully remember it is not about how good you're looking it is about how good you're feeling from inside and if you're feeling good from inside then you are sorted okay so this is how you need to do a physical examination of your parents and this is what you need to do get sign them up for a yoga class sign them up for a gym class get them to climb stairs buy them a cycle and get get a regular head massage so either uh, you know i am a believer of at least two types of massages uh, regularly a head massage and a foot massage और अभी इंडिया में बहुत सारे फुट मसाज बहुत सारे हेड मसाज वाले आए हुए हैं नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू व्हाट आर द थिंग्स दैट यू कैन डू इन टर्म्स ऑफ द डाइट बट प्लीज नो दैट व्हेन यू आर लुकिंग एट योर पेरेंट्स यू मस्ट एग्जामिन ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स दैट आई हैव पॉइंटेड आउट टू यू ओके डाइट अभी डाइट के बारे में आपको क्या करना चाहिए I'm going to give you a few things that you must ensure that your parents are always doing. Number one, that they are always eating nuts. For all of you who are telling me, please save this, please save this, please save this. We are going to save this, okay? You please don't worry about it. Uh, a handful of nuts every day. Now, ideally, what you should do. is let them start their day with some soaked badam or soaked raisins or walnut and such now if they tell you that they are unable to chew on the badam then it means that they need to go and see a dentist and have their oral health in good shape chewing is an important task again another thing that you learned in the doctors for good health series and if they don't chew properly then they are not going to be having good health in the long run so please make sure that their uh, that their mouth and that their oral health is in a good shape if your parents are just in their 60s or 70s they should be able to chew the nuts properly okay there are no excuses there but till the time that you get them to a dentist tell them to soak the badam and then to crush it in a wooden or a stone pestle and then to eat it so a handful of badams every single day that's one thing that you must do the second thing that you must do is ensure that they're not skipping their breakfast now their breakfast can be something really simple you know it can be either a poha upma idli dosa paratha daliya one of those things if they don't like those things it can just be a banana or it can be a cup of milk but whatever that they're having make sure that they are having it at a regular time every single day now what is it that their breakfast should have well their breakfast should have 1 teaspoon of ghee ha huh? and what their breakfast shouldn't have is biscuits a lot of you are saying my parents like biscuits but now they you must know that if you're seeing those kind of things that gait change and uh, you know that stiffness in the shoulders and stuff like that then a, a healthier alternative is required for uh, breakfast so make sure that there is something healthier that they are eating for breakfast uh the fresher they eat interestingly the younger they look 
and the more out of packets that they eat if they eat cereals if they eat biscuits then the older they look good nutrients don't really just come out of uh, out of pills and potions and powders they come out of fresh cooked food so make sure that they're eating fresh cooked food and here's a very special tip that i want all of you to do especially if your parents have any kind of hormonal disorder like thyroid or diabetes um and stuff that at least once every week they should eat on a fresh banana leaf the fresh banana leaf has a lot of nutrients that it adds to our uh, diet which um, you know which nutrition science hasn't even completely discovered you must know this fact that nutrition science has as yet not discovered all the nutrients that exist it's in the process of discovering all of the vitamins minerals uh, phytosterols uh, isoflavones that exist in our meals micronutrients and the likes okay so at least once every week let them eat on a banana leaf it's a nice experience also to eat on a banana leaf so that's one special tip for breakfast now lunch is a very important okay uh, between breakfast and lunch make sure that they're having some nice drink like a sharbat or they can have a fresh fruit i'm going to be talking about fruits and vegetables later in the day but for anyone any of your parents you know who has that little uh, stomach may problem or who's having eyesight may problem or who's having a back problem sometimes it is something as simple as them just being dehydrated for some reason they don't land up drinking enough water so keep something like this visible you know either on the dining table or on the table that they use very often and let them have enough water so a fresh fruit uh, or a freshly made sharbat like a nimbu sharbat you can have as a mid meal between breakfast and lunch then at lunch you must make sure that whatever regular stuff that they're having a roti sabzi dal chawal uh, they are also eating a chutney and a chutney which comes out of you know one of our um, one of our traditional or native chutneys so either a kadhi patta chutney or uh, alshi ka chutney ya fir til ka chutney peanut ka chutney garlic ka chutney dal ka chutney uh, tomatoer ka chutney pudine ka chutney jo bhi aapka special chutney hai they need to be having that and i'll tell you why they should be having it okay a lot of your parents may not really have diabetes but you will find that sometimes they're itching hmm? so if you find that your parents are itching near the nipple or your parents are like while they're talking to you kind of start scratching or itching somewhere on top of their navel and sometimes that you actually find them itching or scratching around their vagina or penis even while they're talking to you and stuff like that it is signaling a micronutrient deficiency a lot of the micronutrient deficiencies are subclinical subclinical means that when you do a blood work for them they may come within the range and you must also understand that when you look at a range for vitamin b12 or vitamin d the range is very large so for example in vitamin b12 you can be anywhere from 200 to 800 is considered to be normal but a lot of these other nutrients they could be falling short on and it may be not coming up in the blood work so uh, that is called as a subclinical deficiency when you have a deficiency but it's not so large that it's coming in the blood work but it's large enough that it's leading to like little itching here and a scratching there and stuff like that now you need to intervene and you need to make sure that they're eating chutneys regularly chutneys are a beautiful way of keeping the taste buds alive when the taste buds are alive digestion is smoother better and much more optimum it is also a time tested way of providing micronutrients in tiny quantities to the body so uh, a native chutney is important uh, also for all those parents who feel like kisi meethe ki aas 
after lunch you know so if they're getting the sugar craving after lunch what they need is a chutney at uh, at lunch so make sure that they're eating this chutney it will prevent all of these scratchy screechy thing that they're uh, feeling and it will also provide them with adequate micronutrients then you go down and you look at what is it that they can have about two or three hours after their lunch now a very important thing for all parents is to nap in the afternoon especially for those who have extremely poor sleep now i do know that the ones who have extremely poor sleep will sometimes just sleep in the afternoon for two or three hours now that is not going to work because it's going to take away from that afternoon sleep uh, from that night sleep even more but if you feel that your parents are not cracking the kind of jokes that they used to earlier that they don't quite get your jokes as quickly as they used to that they start talking their sentences but in between their words the gap has kind of lengthened much more than what it used to all of that means that the brain is actually slowing down and uh, they just need a little better they need to do a little better on their rest on their recovery and an afternoon nap here is an extremely good intervention now for all of your parents who don't sleep well in the night do not ask them to go and lie down on the bed because if they lie down on the bed for that afternoon nap it is difficult to wake them up they're going to sleep for the next two or three hours also make sure that they are not sleeping while sitting on the chair you know so if you have parents jo ke tv dekhte dekhte tumhare se baat karte karte paper padhte padhte so gaye hai to they need that afternoon chutney and they need that uh, afternoon nap uh, other than a chutney you can also give them an achar okay so you can also do a fresh homemade achar not store bought but any homemade achar आंवले का हो कोई लोग सिंगाड़े का बनाते हैं आई थिंक लहसन का बनाते हैं मिर्ची का बनाते हैं अब भी ये सीजन में अंबे हड़द का बनाते हैं मैंगो जिंजर का या फिर कैरी का बनाते हैं गोभी का बनाते हैं शलगम का बनाते हैं सो ऑल दैट इज फाइन नाउ दैट आफ्टरनून नैप नाउ वेर शुड देन दे डू दैट आफ्टरनून नैप यू नो अर्लियर वी यूज टू हैव दिस वन थिंग कॉल्ड आराम खुर्ची हैव यू सीन दैट an aram kurchi is like an easy resting chair which allows your body to relax but it is not in a supine position to wo pura aapko sulata nahi hai it is like sitting in premier economy okay so it's not business class where the seat goes 180 degrees it is also not economy where the seat is just uh, Uh, vertical but it allows you to go down and then if you give them that chair for an afternoon nap then they will wake up in the next 20 to 40 minutes so work at getting them to nap in that aram kurchi aram kurchi is easily available all across uh, india and uh, invest in one so that's about the afternoon nap now we come to what is it that they can eat now when they wake up from that afternoon nap most of them are going to want a chai or a coffee but do not give them and do not tell them to have a chai or a coffee let them have a dahi or a chhas or a lassi instead okay and for all those parents who need either isab gol or they need uh, you know what is that other thing that anything to kind of clear their stomach then or anyone who is on regular antacids ke har roz ek antacid leni hi padti hai or even for those people who are on a bp tablet what you must do is when they wake up you know this afternoon meal should be of dahi which is set along with either black raisins or the brown kishmish or uh, dates ya chuare ya kharik okay yeah even apricots any of these things uh when you set them with uh, dahi so you do know how you set dahi right you take little warm milk and you set it and that that warm milk you put little chhas so in when you may when you're putting that warm milk in that katori put a few khajur or kharik or black raisins one of them okay and then put that little uh, chhas ya dahi and set the curd 
and then keep that aside and tell them to have it after their afternoon nap. What it will do is it will help restore the mucosa of their intestines. It will allow for better digestion, assimilation and excretion and it will reduce chances of acidity, bloating and gas which will be in the night. So uh, do this for uh, them. It is extremely useful. Then sham ko between 5 and 6 make sure that they are eating a wholesome meal. Now a lot of you worry that they are just having chai and when they just have chai then they don't want to have dinner well until 9 o'clock in the night by which time it is too late to have dinner. Now if you tell them not to have chai it is very difficult but uh, and you shouldn't also because you know they've lived 50 60 years in a certain way what you need to do is you have to regulate the food that they are eating so that they are making the most out of their meals just ask them to eat something wholesome so either a chivda at that time or a muruku or a chakli or a poha or a utappa ya lunch pe banai hui roti jaggery and ghee for all of you whose parents are low on hemoglobin levels roti jaggery and ghee at about uh, 5 or 6 o'clock is an excellent meal it allows you to lift your hemoglobin levels without needing to take an iron pill which can otherwise then cause uh, indigestion uh, or a roti and um, chutney that is also a good idea kabhi sandwich kha sakte hai us time mein uh, once a week they can even do like a samosa or uh, something like that but a wholesome meal at that time is extremely important um, milk is also a wholesome meal at that time let them have milk let them have a dal chila dal ka chila so all of these are good meals and in the night get them to complete their dinner by about eight o'clock and let it be a dinner which is not watched in front of tv and let it be more rice based so uh, dal rice khichdi khichdi kadhi um, or alag alag type ke dal so if you have aging parents then you must ensure that every week they're having at least four different varieties of dals and pulses so if you have moong, you can have a lot of arhar, a lot of parsolobia or chickpea. So on the fourth day, rajma or chana or kuret or navrangi. Make sure that the diet diversity of your aging parents is enhanced. Jitna diet diversity shrink hota hai, utna hi health bhi shrink hota hai. So diet diversity badhane ke liye, they don't have to give up on eating rice and eat Mexican one day, Chinese the other day and uh, pasta the third day. All that they need to do is change the, uh, the pulses that they are eating. Now pulses are a good source of fiber, they are a good source of vitamin B, they are also a good source of amino acids. You must have seen that a lot of aging parents actually get tiny pills of amino acids just mein total 1 gram ka bhi amino acid nahi rehta hai lekin fir bhi wo khane ke baad mein their health improves. Now imagine if they just had access to easy with uh, uh, access to easy to assimilate amino acids through something which was wholesome and healthy. So at least four different types of pulses on a weekly basis. So help them plan their diet like that. And in the night, at bedtime, for all those who have a tough time sleeping, or if you notice that you know your parents are now waking up very often in the night, or utke kya kar rahe hai, to bas toilet hi ja rahe hai. Susu karte hai, pani pite hai. Susu karte hai, pani pite hai. So if you notice that happening, then again you need to intervene. And how do you intervene? You intervene with a cup of milk. So raat ko sone ke pehle, a cup of milk with haldi, with one or two strands of kesar and uh, a little bit of nutmeg if you like it. So for all those with extreme sleep problems, a little bit of cashews. For all those with very, very low iron levels, a pinch of uh, RF seeds. 
and for all those with just like sleep which is getting broken often just uh, kesar nutmeg haldi and milk now milk has very high beverage uh, beverage hydration index which is called as bhi and it helps prevent these frequent breaks in the night in their night sleep okay so that's how you help them end their day uh i guess this is probably the most uh, extensive session that i have had on uh, you know on taking care of your parents but i do know that a whole lot of you worry about what is it that you can do and you can do really small things which help them um i'm going to try and take a few questions because i think we are already running out of time i've given you one big long chauda bhashan and we just have about 8 minutes for uh, q and a before instagram will decide ki abhi bahut ho gaya bakwas band karo tumhara to uh, what can you do for sleep apnea and the likes you know remember that til oil with uh, with garlic the massaging that on the legs helps also massaging the soles of your feet with ghee now when you are massaging that for your parents it should be very little ah itna sa tiny on your little finger you take that ghee and you rub the soles of their feet ask them to do it themselves you know if your parents are fine and in good health the more they do things for themselves the better off they will be the better off you will be and an other thing to do especially for loud snoring is to take a little bit of ghee and uh, put it in your nostrils so nostrils mein ghee uh, ear lobes mein ghee all of that and not too much just little will help them sleep better lastly before i go you must also know that your parents health depends on your health so stay in good shape stay active stay fit be at peace with the decisions that you've made in your life whether it is to marry or not marry whether it is to take this job or take or uh, run your own business or take a year off whether it is to wear shorts or salwar kameez or jeans whatever that you have done you know whatever it is that you are doing be at peace with the decisions that you have made that way your parents will also be on board with those decisions otherwise you will keep waiting for their approval wo approval aane nahi wala hai and then you will unnecessarily create friction in a relationship which can do very well without friction especially when they are aging we are all also aging so let's not forget that you know it's not that we are going to not age somehow so uh remember these uh, few fine points and i think i'm just going to ask uh, you know all right so no questions right now from facebook thank you very much for everyone who joined us from facebook also and um thank you for all of you know thank you for tuning in i do hope that you have a wonderful new year and i also hope that your parents have a great uh, new year with good health with diet diversity with exercise and good sleep as the default for 2021 Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all at one o'clock with the ten fruits and vegetables that you must include in your diet. Bye bye.